Hi everybody, my name is Sophie. I'm uh, working for Zipchat since four years now. I um, started in offline marketing, heading to online marketing. I'm the head of marketing now since June last year. And Zipchat itself, not sure whether you know it or not, um, we are on-demand dry cleaning and laundry company. So what we do is we pick up the people's clothing, um, dry cleaning them or washing them, then um, return it back to them within quite a short amount of time frame. And uh, yeah, you can easily order via the app or online. And this is what we do. And today I would like to give you some insights how to get um, the maximum out of your marketing resources and um, mainly by focusing on specific channels and then also taking the time to analyze before acting. So within six months um, we were able to lower our CAC by 50%. We grew our new customer acquisition by 60% and we increased our conversion rate by 35%. And now you're like, Wow, what did they do? Um, so to be honest, we really tested a lot the last couple of years. So um, I would say even the first three years were very, very experimental. So it took us quite a long time to also understand what we want to focus on. Um, and so I just want to give you an overview of what we really did to understand that it might take some time especially regarding approaches. So for us, an approach is always when it comes to a campaign, we try to also do a 360 degrees marketing campaign, so not only out of home, but also doing um, the same on the website, uh, Facebook, and so on. So we did like a lot of different ones. On the one hand, quite an aggressive approach, especially in the very beginning. So just funny phrases, sentences to spread out the brand. But then um, we had it to a rather aspirational approach, which was then quite related to our specific personas we had. So for us, one of the specific personas is, for example, a businessman. Um, and this was like the rather aspirational approach. Um, further going to more self-explanatory self um, approach. So that means really just saying what we are, focusing on the product, nothing else. And then also a bit more tech-focused regarding the app and also some funny phrases again, and at the end, functional. So you see, yes, we tested a lot, <laughs> and we also even did a rebranding in between. Um, and also when it comes to offline media or offline channel, we were quite broad. So we did flyering, mailboxing, um, stands in malls, um, sign spinning, promotions at airports on, this, on the street, corporations, uh, gym advertisement, sponsorships, guerrilla marketing, radio, TV, smart ads, everything. Um, and this is mainly also the same in online marketing. So same for online. For sure, we did some Facebook and Twitter ads, but also um, Groupon, Daily Deal, Affiliate, mobile advertisement, um, display advertisement, some SEO stands where we did mainly backlinkings. And at some point, we just said, OK, now it's time to rethink a bit our strategy. Um, to really grow, to optimize, and to become at some point also the market leader. Um, mainly the reason why we also rethought our strategy was um, due to the fact that our team was a bit reduced from seven to five people. And so we just thought, okay, what can we, like, what is the best stuff we can take out of it? And what are the things we really want to um, focus on? And then for us, the main thing was, okay, we should focus on our best performing channels, which is quite obvious but we are only doing it on really taking actions based on data-driven results. So back in the days, um, our data scientist, the BI person, was really one of our key drivers, and she was very helpful um, in doing all the analysis and then finally also checking what are our best performing channels. And so this then started with all our cross-channel analyses. And what we first of all did was some specific question at least before I get to this I really need to tell you tracking is the key by the way so um, I mean you probably heard it a lot but your data is not worth anything if you don't have a tracking so it is important to really know where do your customers come from otherwise you just don't really know where you start at and even if you don't really have money or whatever for adjust and any third-party tools try to at least have Firebase or any other tools so that you do have some SDKs and can track on the one hand the pixels online on the websites but also all the app events. So what we did first of all was that we said okay we would like to find out 
what are the first order channels for us. So that means all, we, we took into consideration all channels which has um, an effect of the customer when they place the first order. So not only the very last one, so yes, we do last click as well, but we wanted to also understand what is the whole journey, what other channels might there, be, might there be in between. And then at the end we figured out that there were always five channels, no matter which KPIs we looked at, so number of orders, number of customers, but also revenues, which were luckily <laughs> reflecting um, the big picture that most of the revenue orders and customers are coming from the same five channels. And then afterwards we said, okay, but where do our best customers come from? And so what we do is we segment our customers and our VIP customers, for example, a customer who has like, the highest amount of orders and a pretty big AOV, so pretty um, big average order basket. And we want to understand where did those ones came from. And luckily, also these uh, uh, customers came from these five channels. So for us, it was a clear goal to then, for the future, focus on these five channels. For us, these channels were SEA, SEO, Direct, Facebook, and Out of Home. Direct, I would now exclude a bit because Direct is uh, out of home influences Direct and also Facebook is influencing Direct. For us, Direct are all the customers who are coming directly via our website or the app, so which don't necessarily have like any steps in between. And then we also said, okay, we want to become profitable. So how do we do it? For sure, um, focusing on our VIP customers. We also know that most of our VIP customers have the device iOS. So we wanted to mainly focus on iOS. And um, also we figured out that our creators, or the best performing creatives, are mostly those ones which are more functional and less aspirational. This was then proved by an analy analysis, which I will come to in a second. So at the end, our goal is it now to scale those four channels mainly and to optimize on those ones. So this was like the broader picture we could find out okay, these ones are the final channels. And now we wanted to go deeper into every single channel. <laughs> and so first of all, what we did, that we checked the out-of-home channel. And yes, out-of-home is luckily measurable, <laughs> um, mainly if you're taking the brand traffic into conservation and the direct traffic, or also your installs and the transactions. So what we first of all did was that we checked the daily transactions, the daily installs, and traffic of brand traffic and direct traffic. And then you can already see, and we compared it with out-of-home campaigns. And there you can already see that they are definitely peaks whenever we did have any out-of-home campaigns. Um, and for sure we tried to also exclude any all. What we did was that during the time we had out-of-home campaigns, we didn't do any further extraordinary campaigns so that it doesn't really have like, a different effect on it. And here you can already see some outliers, but now we also wanted to understand which of these out of home campaigns are actually performing well, especially also creative wise and so on. And then this is now one example of the overall analysis um, based on the direct sessions and based on tube car panels. So, tube car panels is one out of home campaign we did. This ones are the panels <laughs> and the tube cars where you're mostly staring at it um, for a longer time. And here you can see. The blue line is the baseline, and whenever the red line is higher, this campaign was successful. And we also took like some different KPIs in, so on the one hand, the campaigns itself, so um, uh, tube car panels uh, in this case, but also the amount of days, the um, amount of money we spent, and um, the amount of panels we had. And here you could also clearly see that there are actually only three ones which performed quite well. And those ones were also the ones which had really way more functional creative and less aspira aspirational or creative or aggressive picture um, than on the other ones. Apart from that, we also took some time in SEA. I mean, SEA, luckily, we do have a lot of data, so you can do a lot of analysis. Um, but what we did is that we really invested some time to also look at a CV analysis for SEA. So here, the same, we tried to do a CLV analysis. How did we do it? We grouped um, our campaigns by keywords, and then we checked the average CLV for all the campaigns, and then for the different campaigns, we grouped them. And those campaigns we grouped, we compared with them, and those ones with a higher CLV, we spent more money on. And in this case, or in this way, we then could define a clear CPA goal per every campaign, and this is really performing way better for us now. So definitely also something 
that is recommendable. So in general, those were now just two examples of analyses. We also did one for SEO and one for Facebook. Facebook, we mainly did the same as for Autofilm. So also here we said, okay, we would like to check if this is actually really still a performance channels on ch channel or not, because for us it was not necessary, or at least changed within the last couple of years even. Um, and also here, whenever we did Facebook, it definitely had kind of an impact of out of home, so kind of digital out of home, and we also saw a peak in between. Um, and for SEO, we used to look for the top keywords, and also this was then based on the revenue per customer. So, some best practices for these different channels. Um, out of home. Out of home, I would always tell you, focus on education, not on branding. So, everyone is like, wow, cool, we need to spread the brand out. But to be honest, most of us probably are working in startups or have any startups which are not really that known and even have some products and services that not everyone is aware of. So you need to educate the customers first to really use our service. It's the same for us, so we need to educate our customers to tell them, please do not go to the local dry cleaning store around the corner, just rather use Zipchat. And this is something that takes some time, and unfortunately it's not really done with any cool branding. So if you are becoming a love friend at some point, it's perfect, but first maybe focus on education. Go for rather functional than aspirational creatives, same, that you definitely um, should more explain and um, to make the people aware of your service. And um, we would always recommend to choose ad spaces with a longer dwell time. So when you are quite new, um, it's just quite, I mean, this is the same than education. If you are um, on the street and passing by a huge billboard with a brand on it, yes, you might recognize if it's any fashion brand or whatever. But if you have a, ser a service which is not really known, it definitely makes time to have a um, billboard panel, whatever, with longer dread time so that people can understand it and really read it. Um, station domination, also something we figured out. So station domination is, for example, if you're covering the whole extended plats with your billboards. This just grabs the attention of the customers way more and um, you have a way better effect than just like one single billboard in between 10 different others. And take last minute options, because currently everyone is probably saying, but out of him is way too expensive. It depends. So there are really very good deals, and you can even get up to 60% off um, if you take last minute deals. Those ones are mostly available in summer or even in the beginning of the year. Um, and here it's just important that you could deliver the creative even at the next day. So I'm, I know most of us probably don't have an in-house designer, therefore I would always recommend you have a creative site and just adapt it if there's a cool um, um, deal you could take, and then go for it. <coughs> SEA. For us, um, we focused on what was converting. So for ZipChat, unfortunately, USC and GDN is not really performing. For others, it might. But we are just too regional, we are too small, and have not enough data to share. So we therefore focus on bidding, campaigns, ads, and try to optimize ads as much as we can on this. Um, we always would recommend to use the AdWords automation tools. Um, that mostly means you might need to restructure your accounts a bit so that you can get some more data or give some more data to Google and they could really use, make use of it. But at the end, it is worth it. Also use assisted conversion keywords. Those ones you find in search attribution. Um, those ones are the keywords who have also a touch base of all your whole order process. And on those ones, we would then just recommend you to bid accordingly so that you do have an additional good um, keyword site. And also use auction insights. Um, that means just keep an eye on your competitors. If there are any other new competitors, what kind of deals, vouchers do they have so that you really make use most of this. SEO. Um, for SEO, we always would recommend you to do a for, um, full content audit. So most of the times, those ones are done by agencies quite simple and easily. They have the tool to do so. The implementation itself can be done in-house, which is not a problem, but the most sophisticated way is probably to do it with an agency. Um, that means those ones are um, checking the word count on every single landing page, um, the amount of keywords you have on it, um, how many, if there are any copy pastes or not, um, the meta descriptions, the anchor tags, internal linking, and things like this. 
the end, Google wants to have a great page site, and otherwise you just can't uh, rank properly. Identify your top keywords. Um, I mean, if you do have some data already, then really check, okay, which customer came from which keyword, and then try to identify the top ones for you. Ideally, definitely on um, revenue per customer, and um, always monitor them regularly, so at least on a weekly basis. UX testing, also this is something we would always recommend you, so do some A-B tests, um, do not just change any um, header from the landing page or any steps or reviews or whatever, always do A-B tests so that you really be sure to um, take the best out of it. And also maintain site health, for example with Screaming Frog, to always be sure that Google is definitely um, taking you into consideration for a good ranking and a good quality ranking. And at the end, Facebook. Um, for Facebook, for us, always lookalikes are per working quite well, probably for most of us. Um, we used to take uh, lookalikes from VIP customers, so I just told you in the beginning that we always want to focus on the VIP customers. You can also upload your customer list, which is currently a gray zone, but still you can do it, um, and create some lookalikes of them. Um, also, Facebook has the new feature that you can create lookalikes from the conversion. So conversion is not necessarily a transaction, it can also be an install or whatever is for you a conversion. Um, and focus on your main device. So if you know that your customers are coming via, via web or iOS, don't spend too much money then on Android. Just doesn't mm -hmm. really make too much sense. And align created with other campaigns, especially Facebook, as mentioned in the beginning, is kind of a digital brand channel, at least it is for us now, um, as said, numbers itself just went back and um, so try to always align the creative with your landing page, but also with other creatives like out of home and things like this. Cool, and then um, since we are quite done with all the best practices of the um, different channels, I would just like to give you um, a brief overview and some key takeaways. So definitely structure follow strategy. Um, strategy first, rethink your strategy, what exactly do you want to do, and afterwards try to set up your team according to this. Tracking is the key. Without data, you can't really do too much thing, so tracking is really the focus. Try to get an idea where your, all your customers come from, and um, afterwards you, you can also always use it for retargeting. Know your channels, so take the time to really invest some time to, analysis, uh, to analyze and um, Try to also get the most out of it, um, do some researches, go to workshops, and be the expert in your specific channel. And focus on education, not on branding, at least in the beginning, so that everyone knows about you. And um, yeah, as I said, be data-driven and take the advantage of BI. There's way more <laughs> stuff to do than you can think of, so BI is really something that every marketeer should also be aware of now. There are even like some good things you can do on your own. If you do some R small sessions, then it's also even quite doable at least. And at the end, less is more. So we would always recommend you to focus on specific channels and it should hopefully work out the end. Thank you very much. Did you track like which campaign was working out the best? Like the functional one or the funny one or like the tech one? Yeah, exactly. So what we did, I mean, on the one hand, yes, Facebook is quite easy to track, but also out of home wise, this was like the one analysis I showed you where we used to have the different campaigns in it, the different out of home campaigns and could then, based on the um, baseline and the outlier, see which ones were performing quite well and which ones not. Um, and just thanks to those data, we could then do it. Um, but if you don't really have those data available, I mean, what's always working, if it's now about out of home, for example, um, really check your brand traffic, so the SEA brand traffic and the direct traffic, and then at least you already do get a good feeling for it, okay, does it have like, any impact? At the end, ideally, for sure, the conversion rate should also either stay stable or go up, so it doesn't bring anything if you get bad traffic. Um, but at least this is something that you can definitely do. So checking it with the traffic. Uh, quick question from my side, Alex, by the way. 
is um, you said that you would rather go for education instead of branding, which is um, a bit surprising since the USP is quite clear in this in this case, right? You're just saying, hey guys, so this is a service that already existed. You don't have much competition where you usually would go for education, like cigarettes or whatever. So mm -hmm. why from a branding, like from a strategic point, why would you go for first education, although the USP should be quite clear, or wasn't it strong enough for uh, to basically <coughs> go through the effort of installing the app and stuff? Um, I think, I mean, USP is clear, that's true. But the problem is that people are not used to it. So the thing is, if you have a service which is quite new, I mean, no matter if it's ZipJet or anything else, like a delivery service is quite easy. If it's food, for example, then why not taking it? But um, dry cleaning delivery service is still something that you're not really <laughs> willing to do on the one hand because it's kind of a personal approach. So most of the people also like it to go to the dry cleaning store around the corner. Um, and it's also, this is also something, laundry is kind of a sensitive topic and <laughs> also not the easiest topic to promote, to be honest. <laughs> and so this was also one thing, but mainly really the fact that the service is too new so that people would easily adapt it to their daily life. And have so it really depends. Have you been able to g make that learning before like A-B testing offline campaigns because that's quite painful? Is there like a faster way to do that via SE, uh, like Facebook display or something, GDN? Mm, I think what is always good if you understand your customers and try to figure out, okay, who are your customers in the very beginning. So for us, for example, we focused a lot on all the tech and startup guys in the beginning. So it's completely fine to do some branding. But at some, at some point, we just figured out, okay, those guys are very interested in trying the service, but they're not necessarily the recurring good customers we want to have. And those ones are rather the business people who are not necessarily sitting here um, in this um, crowd. So therefore, I would also tell, tell you, just try to understand your customer base. Whom exactly do you want to target? And then try to um, adapt your strategy on this. And I'm pretty sure, I mean, for sure you don't need to test it with out of home. Guerrilla, but for example, especially <coughs> white posters are quite cheap. So there you can even get one poster for 30 cents, including the printing and the um, putting somewhere on. Um, so this depends. But yeah, Facebook might also probably be an idea um, as long as you always do A-B test, but with the same, so with the same amount of, or with the same audience at the end. Thank you. Hi, thanks for the presentation. Uh, so, uh, when actually starting with out of home advertising, uh, how did you choose it? I mean, I guess you, you, you're in charge uh, of marketing for the entire Europe, or how did you choose, like, which look? Did you go city after city, or did you do a couple of cities at the same time, or did you do micro locations in a city? Mm -hmm. That's one part of the question. The second one, what percentage of the total budget did you? put initially into out of home yeah. advertising? Um, so we are only in Paris, London and Berlin. So not in all the countries, um, just like in the bigger cities. And um, how we did it was that we also started with smaller campaigns, um, <coughs> like white posters, for example. As I said, it's always a cheap, easy option to test anything. Um, and then we really focused always on specific <coughs> deals and try to get last minute deals when possible. Um, we didn't really work together with any agencies, so I mean, I know that a lot of people are doing it, but we were always focusing on specific cities, so especially taking Berlin now, <coughs> what we do is then we take a certain budget, which is mostly around, so when we do out-of-home campaigns, it's most like once a month, for example, and then once a quarter, mostly even, and then um, in this specific month, it's around 50% of the budget goes to out-of-home. Um, and then I would really just suggest to have specific stations to track if this has already um, potential for you. And at the end, in Berlin, it's quite easy, I would say, um, because there you just have like the main stations and you can also target everything on those ones, which is good. So you can just easily book a whole station and you can definitely also get it quite cheap, which is luckily nice. But yeah, normally what we do is that we just suggest different smaller locations and then smaller either campaigns or um, platforms, and then last minute deals. Hi, yeah, thank you for the presentation. I have a pretty okay. specific ah, yeah. question. <laughs> you mentioned SEO, and like, thanks God for SEO, because it's a pretty monkey job, but it's the cheapest traffic you can get, right? 
You mentioned that you optimize on keywords that actually bring majority of conversions and revenue. How do you track it? Because with analytics, it's not really possible to see conversion per keyword. And in the search console, you see the traffic, but you don't see conversions. So how do you connect the keywords to the conversion? Um, yes, we do see it, um, luckily. So our BI person set up quite a good tracking for us and um, so that we really had all the channels included and also knew, okay, which one came from SEA and all the ones which not came from SEA were then automatically assigned to SEO. Um, and apart from that, we also do have um, a voucher code quite often, which we then on top of also track with. Thank you. I can just shout. Yeah, go. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that you mentioned is the importance of strategy before structure. Yeah. What would you say is the most um, important aspects of the strategy for early stage businesses? Mm, probably you should definitely, first of all, have your vision. So where do you want to go? Um, I mean, the vision should be, or definitely should be a long-term thing. The strategy itself, I wouldn't um, necessarily say longer than a year even maybe just, so you should have a long time strategy, which is a year, but then the different parts probably just like OKR related even, so just like on um, quarter base or whatever. So this depends a bit on what kind of business you have and also where exactly you want to look at for the future. Um, but strategy itself, I mean, it's the most important thing. This also is not only marketing related, it's especially also, okay, what ca with what do you want to make money yet? So especially if you have specific services, um, are there specific services which you want to promote more than others because those ones bring you more revenue, are the better, better customers? So it's s marketing strategy itself is always quite tricky to say, okay, it's just marketing. It's way more, it's, I mean, for us, yes, we then focus on the best customers, VIP customers, since we know, okay, those ones bring the best money. But if you have, um, I don't know, um, a clothing brand now, and you know, okay, this shirt, uh, which costs way more euros than the suit, which I want to um, sell, uh, brings me better customers, and at the end also has a better margin, then you should focus on this one, and um, try to adapt your whole strategy towards this one. Um, so therefore, it's quite hard to say, okay, what's first and where to go next? Try to understand your whole business, also try to understand, okay, what kind of CAC do you want to have? What are you willing to pay for a customer? What should be the ideal customer lifetime value? Or is it just like a one-time usage and not necessarily a recurring business? And then um, try to have that uh, adapt the strategy on this. And if you have like the main points, then for sure it's like important to understand the customer and see where do you find those customers. Um, do you find there's a uh, significant difference between CPAs and LTVs on different channels? Again? Sorry, I didn't hear. Do you find that there's a significant difference between your customer acquisition costs and your lifetime values? I mean, actually there shouldn't. Um, <laughs> but uh, yes, there is. Um, especially, I mean, for us, it's also on the different channels itself. So what we do is that we have an overall CSE for sure and um, a specific channel based CSE. And yeah, for sure, those ones, um, those channels wh which are unpaid uh, are the way better ones uh, for yourself. Um, but yes, so there is a significant um, difference. I mean, at the end, the CSC should be way lower than the CAV at some point because, um, I mean, customer lifetime value, this is at the end where you make the profit with. So it depends also then again, how much money can you make and what should be the final stage for yourself and then, um, okay, what should be the CPA and the CAV. So for us, depends on the channels, um, but most of the time, the CAV should definitely be 50% more than the CPA. Thank you so much.